What is going on everybody? Today we're talking more about the fiber and I'm going to show you how to take this and turn it into this. So let's get into it. Today's video is sponsored by OM Tech. As you can see here, my whole business runs on the back of these machines with fibers and CO2s across my garage. If you are in the market, give OM Tech a look. All right, so now we're gonna jump right into it and you can see I've got light burn pulled up. Light burn is what is gonna run this whole thing. Um, I prefer light burn over easy CAD. It just makes things, I mean, to me, so much easier for my workflow. I'm using light burn across CO2s and Galvos. So it's awesome. Um, so you'll see here, we're going to talk a little bit about the design and setting side of it. And then I'll cut over to the machines and we can actually look at, you know, getting that set up. So first of all, this coin is right about 30 millimeters on the outside edges. So what I've done here is you can actually see, I've got a circle already laid out and there's a circle that's around my designs. And there's also one here in the middle. Um, depending on what you're doing, you may want that border circle out there because it's set on a T1. So that's going to be your tool path. So you can select that and you can change it to whatever you want. But that tool path is basically a non-engravable path. So just make sure you don't have any headaches. You're not accidentally engraving something you don't want to. But it also gives you a surface that you can anchor off of. So what I've done is you can see on this coin and maybe you'll see in the camera maybe you're not but there is a ridge right around the edge here so i've measured what is the center portion that is actually engravable on this coin and it marks out to be right around 29 and so that this line when i launch it with the galvo you'll see the red line actually ends up in that trough right there so i'm going to use this because a lot of times, like in order to get the best out of your machine, especially if you have a lower wattage machine, you want things to be at the center of the bed. Me, because I am using the 100 watt, it's a little bit more intense, it's got more power, I'm not so worried. Um, I'll show you the video, and I've actually gone and put in two bolts, and it's a little bit off center, but I've lined it up so that way we can just do repeatable, because I got several of these coins to go. So. Let's talk a little bit about the settings. So we'll see here, I've got this guy all set up over here. Here's my designs and I've got the designs actually already grouped to go. So what I do is I go and I will grab this and I can just go and drop it right here and I have it set up so it snaps. So if I snap, I can go ahead and snap to the middle of that circle that's already there. And then it will go ahead and I can burn it right where it's at on the bed. So let's go ahead and we'll pull open the settings and we'll take a look at what we got going on here. So what I have set up, I have a, a multi um, setting engraving. And so you can see here, I've got the engrave, a clean and a black mark. So the first thing is gonna go, it's going to take off some of that surface. It's going to give us some texture and get down into the coin a little bit. So I'm doing that at 1000 speed. So 1000 millimeters a second. My frequency is 20 and my max power or the power that I'm using is 95. Um, this Q pulse, so if you have a MOPA machine, this is your pulse width. <clears throat> so I am setting up at 200, which is the, the normal pulse width for just regular fiber. So just know you can use this setting and it will react very similar. Just know that different power machines will, will get different results at different, you know, obviously my settings work for my machine. You would have to test these for yours. I'm using a hundred watt MOPA. So keep that in mind. So a thousand millimeters a second is what I'm running right now. Um, and the line interval is 0 0.05. I'm using a scan angle of 43 degrees. So not quite 45, we're off just a little bit. And then we're gonna do six passes with a cross hatch. So essentially 12 patches, passes, cause it's gonna go this way, then this way. So that's one pass. So times two, 12. And then an angle increment of seven degrees. So once it goes through and it does cross hatch, 
then the next one will increase by seven degrees and then run a cross hatch again. Increase, increase, increase as it gets through those six passes. So I'm doing that in order to make sure that none of the engraving lines end up hitting each other again and getting a little bit deeper or creating any kind of waves in the bottom surface of the coin. So we go through that, it does the engrave for 12 or six passes, 12 total passes with the cross hatch. And then it comes in and we're gonna do a clean. Clean, I'm doing 2000 millimeters a second. Frequency is 2000 or 200. And then max power is 30. And my Q pulse width is still 200. So kind of a normal setting for a JPT. So this frequency here you do is probably higher than a rachis, but a JPT would do this 200. Um, and then the line interval here, we're getting a little bit tighter because we want to kind of fine up and just kind of smooth out anything we got is a 0 0.025. And same thing, we've got the 43 degree angle, but we're only doing one pass, so we don't need an increment. And we're doing a cross hatch. So it's kind of whoop, whoop. And that is our clean pass. So it only does one. And then we get into the black. So black, I did not do a cross hatch, but here's where settings get more specific to MOPA. So 500 millimeters a second at 200 frequency, 30 is our max power, and then a Q pulse width of 20. So obviously pulse width, when if you don't have MOPA, this is not an option for you. This can be done on fibers it's different settings. I want to think that on my 30 watt fiber, I was getting a black mark at like 50 speed at a frequency of 60. And I think maybe the max power was a little bit higher is maybe like 40, 50%. Um, but again, test on your machine, see what you can get as a black mark. And on here we are, we're lowering. So a smaller line interval. 0 0.01 so it's going to put more heat in one space for a longer period of time that's what kind of creates that black mark in the engraving and we're just going to do it for one pass and the scan angle is set at zero so it's running left to right straight up the coin okay so other than that nothing super special you can see we've got all of these layers turned on that's what this little toggle is here so let's run you through what the preview looks like and so if we come over here you can kind of see okay it's doing our cross hatches and it's doing that for 12 passes and then it's going to come through and now it's getting hard to see because now you can see it's going left to right so i know that it's doing that black mark okay so there's that so now <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about why i do what i do so obviously I'm trying to create some type of production run. So I'm going fast enough and with enough power to take off some surface off, but it's not going super deep. I'm not looking for like a, a 3D, like, but it's giving me some good texture to get a black mark in there. So I'm making my mark, I'm cleaning it off with a second pass or a second set of settings. And then the third set of settings is a black mark. Got it? Good. Okay, so now, Let's jump over and we'll actually show it live happening and I'll talk you through the process. All right, so you can see that I put in the two uh, bolts that I was talking about. And <clears throat> normally like that circle right there is center. What I'm using is I'm actually, as I'm showing the frame, I'm using the arrow keys to really dial in where that's at. Um, if you hold down control, you can actually do that fine adjustment so it's, it's a much smaller nudge that you do with the arrows if you're holding down the control key. If you just use the arrows by themselves, it's a little bit larger. And then if you shift, it's actually larger than that. So just dialing in what that looks like um, to make sure that it's going to hit where I want it to every time on the coin. This is going to set me up to be definitely a more of a, a production run. So that way I can literally do this side, pull that coin off, either flip it or move to the next coin, um, depending on what you wanna do. If you have all one side that's gonna be the same, you can just literally just like keep swapping those out, get all of them done. Um, and you can see there, like now I'm, I'm actually showing the design. So I can really see, okay, does it look like it's centered? Does it need to move one way or the other? Um, and get a little bit closer so we can actually see it.
<clears throat> actually from here I ended up nudging it a little bit more to the left because it did look like the the design was going to be too far and almost like touching the right side of the coin but got that all dialed in and now we're going to give it a blast So you can see there, now we've got the first cross hatch done um, and it's gonna keep going through. So we'll speed this up a little bit so that way you're just not staring at it the whole time even though I know it could be hypnotizing and it's fun to watch. But we'll speed it up, we'll get to the cleaning pass, you'll see the black mark um, and then we'll wrap it up. So here's the finished coin. Um, you can see it looks kind of grody. So we're gonna go and clean it up, take it over the sink here in just a second. So this is my process of getting these coins clean. Um, so I'm gonna wet the coin and we're gonna rub it over. I mean, it's just a pretty much a generic scotch Brite pad. So run it a couple of times. Make sure you're going in the same direction. We're not swirling, we're, you know, it gives, us, it gives it like a brushed look that goes across it flip it over, do the same thing. You could just end right there. But I most of the time go an extra mile um, and I hit it with a 600 plus wet sandpaper and just really kind of clean off any of the rough edges, any of the burr that comes from using the machine. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, you just wet the coin, that's enough water and just rub it against that sandpaper. And it really just gets it smoother to the touch and more of a finished product that like you and I would wanna hold in our hand and you really enjoy. All right, everybody. Well, that is my process. That's how I do it. All the whole coin thing. Um, and so I hope that that was helpful. And if you did like this content, if it was helpful, please let me know by liking the video, throwing me a comment, subscribing, all of that jazz. Um, I, I will also go ahead. I will throw down my affiliate information. I will throw down sources for coins and I will throw down some of the settings that I already have listed in case you didn't catch them and you don't want to record or rewind back and forth to get them all. I'll drop them down in the description. So please, after this, check out the description, get all that stuff. If you're interested in OM tech, I will put down discount codes down there if they are applicable at the time you're watching this video. Um, but I will leave you a send off and give you some more sparks flying on the coins just for your enjoyment. So again, thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one.